Boys, girls, cats, girls, what is going on? My name is Isalti, and welcome back to another video here on the channel. As you can tell from the title and the thumbnail, yes, it is part two of the Bird Keeper Toby's Wants to Battle Challenge, but this is slightly salty's Wants to Battle Challenge. Yeah, I guess that would be the name of the title, right? Instead of Bird Keeper Toby, it's slightly salty Wants to Battle Challenge. And it's our turn to answer some questions. So I said part two. If you don't know what I mean by that, there was a part one earlier this year where Bird Keeper, uh, Bird Keeper Toby made six questions plus one extra question, which was just tag three people that you want to see take on this challenge. And it's just to kind of get to know your fellow Poketubers, essentially. It's mostly in the Pokemon community. It does extend outwards too. It can extend to any YouTuber or content creator, but it's mostly within Poketubers. So, now, like I said, there's six questions, you tag three people, so obviously if we are doing this challenge, we were tagged by somebody. Who were you tagged by? We were tagged by Talon, who also went by the name Scythe until about, I think, last week. I think last week was when he did the rebrand where he's now Talon. Uh, I don't think his rebrand's finished. I think he's coming out with a new logo too. I think that's what I read somewhere. I could be wrong with that, so Scythe, uh, Talon, if I'm mistaken, you can correct me in the comment. Uh, in the comments if you're watching this but yeah so we got tagged by him and he is an absolutely amazing creator a uh, smaller creator than me he's only at 60 subscribers right now but he's definitely gonna pass me real soon i can feel it um he does amazing draft league content mostly however i think he's expanding i think that's what he's talked about in his wants to battle challenge is that one of the things that you can expect from him is an expansion of content once again he can correct me in the comments uh also i'm gonna be linking his wants to battle challenge video in the comment section below in the description below sorry so uh be sure to go check out his video as well after watching mine so yeah but um wants to battle we got six questions what we're gonna answer all six of them and then we're gonna tag three more people at the end so let's get into it pretty much all there is let's get into it all right question number one what is the best pokemon of 2020 there seems to have been some confusion with this question i saw that talon was a little confused he didn't know exactly how to answer this and i don't know either so what is the best pokemon of 2020 the way that talon went with it was with gen 8 he answered what is the best gen 8 pokemon however i was thinking about it and i'm like wait gen 8 didn't come out in 2020 gen 8 came out in 2019 so what i'm gonna take this question to mean is that he's asking what is your favorite pokemon that came back in 2020 so the pokemon that came back throughout the dlc or the new pokemon in the dlc now i'm going to talk about one of my new favorite pokemons when it comes to galar versions and stuff like that which realistically the only reason i'm stating that is because it is my favorite galar form um and then i'm going to talk about my favorite pokemon that came back in the dlc so first things first my favorite galar form is galarian uh la -la -la -la, galarian articuno a little upset that this thing is not ice psychic it is indeed psychic flying big mistake i think on their part i know it's the bird trio so they wanted to keep the flying typing however you could be a bird without the flying typing like mm, mm. and that way zapdos could have been our first electric fighting we caught again we could have gotten another ice psychic and we could have gotten another fire dark i would have been okay with it though i would have been okay with it and especially since their moves and their abilities sound like they're for an ice psychic and a fire dark and a freaking electric electric um fighting type pokemon like if you were gonna take away their primary typing at least give them the stab i would have give them like well if you took away the flying typing you could have just given them all the ability aerial aid makes sense normal type moves become flying type they get the stab boost if i'm not mistaken as well if i'm not mistaken it's actually a bigger boost than stab might actually be a little bit less if i'm not mistaken but either way you could have done that with them that would have been absolutely fantastic that would have been so sick and so cool or if you want to switch them to psychic flying so they stay as the bird trio you could have given them like uh galvanize galvanize i think that's i think that's the ability there's an ability that turns electric into uh, normal into electric type moves and gives them a stab. That could have been Zapdos's. Um, Articuno's could have been Glaciate. Bang. And then for Moltres, you could have come out with a fire one. 
pyronize. Pixelate, pyrolate. Pyrolate. There you go. Electrolate and glaciate. Let's call it voltolate. That would win. Or maybe it's galvanate. Is it galvanate? I don't know. Either way, I think that would have been the best thing for them. They didn't do that. Either way, Galarian, uh, Galarian Articuno is still my favorite Galarian form. Uh, I just think it's absolutely sick and I absolutely love it. Now, if we're talking about what's my favorite Pokemon that returned with it throughout the DLC of 2020, obviously, you know, I'm going to say Lycanroc. Bad Boy came back and I am so pumped that he returned with some new TR moves. And you know what? That's why I'm saying he's the best. It's because everybody always slept on Lycanroc there. Everybody. I've done Draft League now for a few years. I was doing some off cam, but I really sucked at it. I wasn't even trying to get better. I just did it for fun and to build friends online, essentially. And I would always pick like in Rock Day over like in Rock Dusk after it came out. And because I've been doing Draft League since also uh, since Sun and Moon actually. And then when Ultra Sun and Moon came out, my first ever draft, I was like, you know what? I'm grabbing like in Rock. I don't want like in Rock Dusk. I want like in Rock Midday. I'm like, it's better. I think it's better. It's got a, it's faster. It's a little weaker, uh, like on the physical attack side, if I'm not mistaken. However, it still does hella damage. And everybody runs Dusk as Life Orb, but then everybody runs Midday as Choice Banded or Choice Scarfed or Focus Sash with Swords Ends. Little shenanigans there. But yeah, but now it's got access to Close Combat and Play Rough via TR, so I think that's insane. I think it actually got a couple other moves via TRs as well, allowing it to run more sets than just your typical Excel Rock, Stone Edge, Drill Run, Iron Head, maybe Crunch, maybe an SD variant, like... It has more viability now, and that's why I'm gonna say Lycanroc is the best Pokemon of 2020. Get with it or get out. <laughs> On to the next question. Question number two. Question number two, what is the best video you have made this year? Most looking forward to making. Oh, I need some water. <clears throat> yeah. So one of my favorite videos I made this year was the Can You Beat Pokemon Emerald with a Routes? video i absolutely loved it um it got decent views i think it hit over 100 views um and it was just i wanted to crack me back there there we go uh it was just an absolutely great video um editing eh, it, like that was my favorite concept it wasn't my favorite edited uh i could have definitely done a lot more i feel like i rushed it a little i really wanted to get a video out that like that out that's also because i was very hyped about that type of content because i was really watching i was watching every single one of uh tobin's um sorry short tempered's videos on it um on can you beat this with this i even came up with my own variant of it um called the trainer challenge which i do plan on bringing eventually to the channel when i have more time so maybe actually maybe in december you could see it because sometime in december or early January because I won't have school um, or maybe in the summer you can see that for sure um, so most f looking forward to making probably that is one of them um, I have some ideas I've been teasing salt miss salt miss is still gonna happen but I have some ideas for videos but I don't know if I'm at the point that I can actually make those videos I don't know if my editing style is at the point that I can actually do what I plan on doing um, building the hype that i want to because i got a really big idea but i don't want to say because if i say it then i'm gonna have to do it and if i'm not happy with it i don't want to force myself to do it so i'm not gonna tease that but i am gonna tease salt miss content uh i've been talking about this thing called salt miss i'm looking into making a logo for salt miss that's another thing that's holding me back from all the other content as well is i need a logo for it in order to do my salt miss content it's gonna be the 12 days of salt miss uh it's gonna be announced shortly here on the channel most likely um, but is it going to be as hype as I want it to be? Maybe not. I should have started working on it earlier. Uh, but next year's salt miss is going to be absolutely chaotic. But, uh, other content that is the best video I've made this year. I don't know exactly because I haven't expanded my content as much as I would have liked to this year. I really enjoyed making my TCG videos. I really enjoyed unpacking my TCG videos. Um, so that is one thing that's for sure um but yeah that's pretty much it to it my favorite video was probably my favorite concept was probably the can you beat a game with a pokemon i really want to do more of those 
I had planned to do a rock rough and then I never finished it. So, yeah. But yeah. Um, other than that, what can your viewers expect from you in 2021? I want to spice up my content a little. Um, I want to kind of relax from just pumping out Draft League all the time. Um, you can expect one Nuzlocke from me at all times. The second one ends, another one will begin, minimum. Uh, and it will always be a collab. You could expect maybe some solo content coming back. However, like, what will probably be my solo Nuzlocke here? My solo Nuzlocke here on the channel will most likely be um, the compilation videos of my TikToks. That'll probably be a thing. Uh, I obviously didn't do a Fire Red compilation because my Fire Red game crashed, so we never actually beat it. So that kind of sucks. Um, but the Alpha Sapphire that's currently going on, once I'm done that, if I lose, if I win, there will be a compilation video here on YouTube. So that will most likely be my solo TikTok, uh, my solo Nuzlocke content. But you could see some other stuff, like I'm thinking about doing some top 10s. I would really like to do that or something on the lines of that. I talked about the trainer challenge. I do plan on bringing that in. Uh, I do plan on bringing more Pokemon challenges back of, like, can you beat this game? Like, can you beat challenges? Um, anything else? Um, I experimented this year with coming up with my own Nuzlocke ideas. Uh, the Salty Lock, which I canned twice. Um, no, only once. Because I didn't like the rule set. Maybe the Salty Lock could come back. If, if there is solo content, it would be a Salty Lock. However, I might wait for that. Um, but I might play around with coming up with new Nuzlocke variants. Like, I have a couple in mind that I would like to try out. It's just a matter of finding the right person to do it with, especially one of them. One of them, um, one of them involves TCG in a Nuzlocke, in a Nuzlocke series. So, I want to find a TCG Poketuber that does similar stuff to me. Experiments with TCG, but is mostly a Nuzlocke person. Uh, well, not mostly, but like maybe a 50-50 and we can collab on that. If that becomes a thing, then it might become a thing. And I kind of want it to be somebody different outside of the community I'm a part of now. One thing I really want to expand in 2021 is doing a series with somebody outside of my community. Now, I did that with Blazing Torchic and me and Blazing Torchic will probably pick up another versus down the line as well. Um, that's something you can expect in 2020. Maybe the versus coming back. Uh, or maybe we'll bring on a third person and make it a three-way versus. That'd be really sick. I have three-way versus with uh, JV and W3S7. You could expect season two of that coming in 2021. Our extreme randomized three-way versus with J and W3S7. You can expect that. You can expect another larger collaborative project coming as well that's already planned and is set to debut actually in 2020. So it's coming soon. So that is something there as well. But you can just expect me um, to try to experiment more on the channel here in 2021. Uh, like I said, I want to branch out, not necessarily away from Pokemon. Like, I would like one video a week or two to be something other than Pokemon. I've been contemplating doing Fall Guy mashups and Among Us mashups. And um, I really want to do one. Whether it's Fall Guys or Among Us, I haven't decided yet, but I want to do one of those. Maybe you could see a Call of Duty video or a Fortnite video. Even though I'm not great at Fortnite and I'm not necessarily great at COD, I'm, I, I consider myself a little above average at COD. Um, but I'm no, I'm no Nate Shot, <laughs> not a chance. I'm nowhere near anybody like that. Nate Shot, um, Laser Beam. Is Laser Beam even COD? Either way, uh, I'm nowhere near pro. Nowhere near pro. But, like, I'm the guy that's usually at least first or second on the leaderboard. I'm usually going positive. Usually have at least a one point, depending on the game, 1.5 to 2 KD ratio. Um, I'd like to say usually. Now, I do find myself going three good games and then one really shitty game where I'm, like, 2 and 12. I don't know why. It just happens like that. But, yeah. But other stuff that you can expect in 2021 is just expanding on not linking myself directly to draft league and uh nuzlocks um now will i be dipping draft league no iba rcf guys don't get startled i'm not going anywhere it's just i've already talked about it that iba is not going to be picking up the second that iba season three finishes it's not there's gonna be at least a month or two break 
um rcf is not going to be a series that happens all the time rcf is going to be a twice maybe once a year thing iba will end up switching from a four times a year thing to maybe a two or three times a year thing as well like it's just the back to back to back i want people to expand and try other draft leagues like not necessarily try but like they don't even have to it's just i know some people want to do another draft league away from iba but they don't want to be a part of two or three draft leagues at once and i tried three at once i hated it talon tagged me in this how the hell do you do it yeah okay i got out of focus there for a second uh, I, I don't get how he did it but yeah so um that's a thing i feel like there's other stuff too that just i'm forgetting at the moment but yeah but um that's it for question number three let's move on to question number four is there anything on youtube that's made you feel really good this year um anything that has to do with mr beast or david dobrik pretty much uh when it comes to giving back mr beast has been given back and when mr beast saw that he couldn't do everything that he normally does with his channel he's like you know what i've been wanting to make a gaming channel let's make it and his gaming channel is popping off man um the guy always wants to give back to the community um his community to other people's communities um he loves giving back to like every community just by going out in the real, real world and giving out shit but unfortunately due to covid he couldn't do that so that's made me feel fantastic but anything that i've done personally here on youtube that's made me feel really good this year um iba always makes me feel good <laughs> um like especially um well thanksgiving just passed and uh i forget who started it i think it was jay i think it was jv who said thanks to salty for starting iba and bringing this crew together and stuff so that made me feel great i was like man i did something good um that made me feel great uh other stuff i've done mm, i don't really know uh, my channel i hit 100 subscribers this year that was big i'm at 160 i think right now that's great um uh, but i'm obviously a bit more proud of my tiktok <laughs> tiktok is easier to grow on but it has grown a lot more than i thought it would i didn't even think i would be at 8,000 subs right now not approaching 2k so yeah um i think i'll be hitting 2k by like midweek if not this week um so that's a thing um what else um but yeah so tiktok i really proud of that but that's pretty much everything that's made me feel good this year is just like seeing the stuff on youtube and stuff um like there's been a lot of dark stuff with covid and a lot of the stuff with the black lives matter and that was huge too so and it's still both these things are still going on both these things will still are still going on and it's huge so when something good and positive comes up it's great to see right so yeah question number five the crown tundra or the isle of armor crown tundra for sure uh the isle of armor though it had more diverse environments i'd like to say like it had the marsh area it had the flower meadows i felt like the different environments in the isle of armor was better than the crown tundra the crown tundra was just like snow 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 okay take away the snow throw in a reggie but like i felt the environment in the isle of armor was better than the crown tundra the attention to detail i guess was better in the isle of armor than the crown tundra the crown tundra was like oh legendary sword legendary sword legendary sword the crown tundra didn't have much of a story to it and i hated that where the isle of armor did i was really hoping a storyline would come in with the dlc i was really hoping there would be more fights that were actually meant for i feel like one thing that um sword and shield didn't do well on is i would have done personally i think uh a dlc to a second region would have been the best thing um but that could have been a lot for a dlc so i understand why they didn't do it but i would say additional gyms like i think the crown tundra could have been a great area to see like either retired gym leaders and this is like 
we know that Peony used to be a gym leader, used to be a SEAL-type gym leader. I would have loved to see us fight retired gym leaders who go to this area where it's, like, just calmer. And there is maybe a mini gym quest there where you battle the master gym leaders or the elite. An elite four. An elite four in DLC would have been sick. But they didn't. And it, to me, it was lackluster. Like, they didn't want to do an elite four here, but I still would have made an elite four where it's like, these are the four elite trainers that battle alongside with Leon. This is who Leon trains against. These were, are the four greatest trainers in the region, apart from obviously yourself and Leon. That would have been sick. Uh, I would have loved to see PNE be one of them. Um, and just something like that would have been so great. But they failed on it. So Crown Tundra is better because I like the Pokemon Dynamax adventures. But Isle of Armor paid more attention to detail, I find. Question number six, name a smaller cr creator who deserves more love. I've already talked about the person, uh, Talon, the person that tagged me in this. Um, he's tiny right now at only 60 subscribers. Go subscribe to him if you're if you're not already because he's crushing the Draft League content and he's just doing great content there. So be sure to go and support him because he's absolutely amazing. Um, great guy to talk to, great guy. He's hopped in a couple streams and he's hopped in our stream chats, been a lurker, been a talker. He's hopped in our Dynamax adventures. It's fantastic. Be sure to go and give him the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button for him because he is a great creator um, and a lot more mature than what his age is. Um, and if you didn't know, IBA initially had a uh, over 16 rule. Just for maturity wise, we didn't, it's not like, we're not trying to hate on anybody that's under 16 that does content creation. It was just, there's a lot of guys that are over 20. We have even dads in the league and stuff. So we just want to do it for a maturity wise to make sure everybody was staying in there being mature and stuff. And Talon was like, Talon's under the age of 16, if I'm not mistaken. And yet one of the most mature people in there. So fantastic. Question number seven, we have to tag three people to take on this challenge. I am going to be tagging Kyogre Kawaii, The Shady Past, and Rebel X Trainer. Those are the three guys I'm tagging. I feel like there was a fourth I wanted to tag. There was a fourth I wanted to tag. Who was the fourth I wanted to tag? Is there? Maybe not. Do, 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 do. No, because Westy and Monk already got tagged. Yeah, Westy and Monk already got tagged. So, yeah. Those are the three I wanted to tag. I wanted to tag Rebel. I wanted to tag the Shady Past. And I wanted to tag Kyogre Kawaii. Let's see you guys take on the Bird Keeper. Toby wants to challenge wants to battle sorry challenge part two essentially is what i'm calling it uh the questions are in the description go check them out and yeah see your video soon that's gonna be for this one guys hope you guys did enjoy these questions that i answered nothing too special just a little something something pretty much a check in it's it's the challenge is uh personally i think it's designed to check in on people in one of our darkest years so far so like that we've lived for like I'm not trying to say the black pay the black plague was better than COVID. Like a better year. It wasn't probably. But I I'm just saying in one of the darkest years that most of us have been there for. So um, but yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay salty.